Hello and welcome to another episode of Reading in Bed Extracts with me, Amanda Steele. Now before I get on to this episode's book, I have an announcement to make. I've been going weekly with this podcast for quite a while now. It started off every two or three weeks and then it just ended up being weekly. But it's going to be less frequent now because I've got a new podcast, which is going to be me reading a chapter of my book, Ghost of Me, every week. And if anyone's interested in that, I'll post links in the write-up underneath the information for the book that I'm going to be reading today. So on to this episode's book. It's called Wesley Yorstead Goes Outside and it's written by Stephanie Harper. And I'll tell you a little bit about the book. Wesley Yorstead Goes Outside explores the life of Wesley Yorstead. A 33-year-old graphic novelist who suffers from a severe case of agoraphobia that has kept him shut inside for over five years. When he meets Happy Lafferty for the first time, delivering groceries on behalf of her father's neighbourhood market, Wesley can't shake the inherent magnetism between them and seeks to get to know this young woman who invades his space, both physical and mental. As their relationship grows more intimate, the restrictions of his situation become an even greater obstacle. When Happy's past life catches up to her, Wesley must decide if he can finally leave his apartment to help. A meditation on anxiety, fear and human connection, Wesley Yorstead goes outside and asks the reader to consider what our fears take away from our lives and how we might overcome them. So here's the extract. Inside my apartment I have everything I need for a single inhabitant. It's more than sufficient with a bedroom large enough for a queen bed, a spacious bathroom and an open living space with a full kitchen. It has several windows and a door. People tell me the building is in a prime location given that it's in the heart of Mile High City. They tell me this is important. It's not a terrible city. I'm certain there are worse. I remember a field trip I took in grade school. I stood in awe of the steps of the state capitol, with a round marker set into the marble, showing the exact elevation of 5,280 feet. It's how Denver earned its nickname. A strange sense of accomplishment overwhelmed me as I planted myself on that stairway, above so much of the world. I haven't been to that bronze-stormed building in years. The stainless steel supports have eroded under decades of weathering and the uppermost portions have begun to crumble in structural decay. I haven't seen this myself. I haven't seen a lot of things. My apartment is on the third floor of an old brick building and if I look out of the large window along the east wall of my living room I see a park, a fragment of grass and trees imprisoned by towering condos on all sides. Concrete pathways weave through the area, with a bridge over the river. When the weather permits, these walkways convey people on bikes, couples with clasped hands and disposable coffee cups and lone women walking dogs on fluorescent leashes. If I look further, I can see the Denver skyline hovering over brick buildings in the distance, glowing yellow-green against the night sky. If I look... I never opened a window in my living room. I did once, the first year I moved. I'd begun to spend more time inside by then, aware that when I went anywhere, I'd become overwhelmed by the utter unpredictability of people and places. Anything could happen out there. This expectancy that something would happen tightened down in the centre of my chest and made it harder and harder to endure any kind of new situation. Still, I had occasional moments when I longed to participate in some way, and in a quiet instance of contemplation, I entertained the notion that if I opened my window for some fresh air, the sounds of the city, even the breeze might ease the cabin fever, but the Platte River has always been rank with human garbage and the swampy aroma of mosh and mildew. The noise of rowdy people traversing the sidewalk below grated on my nerves. I haven't opened my window since. That was five and a half years ago, six months to the day before the last time I left my apartment, the day I realised I'd never leave again, October 27, 
2004. I have everything I need inside. So that's the extract and if you like the sound of the book, as usual I'll be posting more about the book and where you can find out about the author and buy the book from. And if you want to be informed when the next episode of Reading in Bed Extracts goes live, whenever that might be, if you subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on, you'll get an alert and you'll be able to listen as soon as it goes live. And I will, of course, be continuing to do the monthly Reading in Bed episodes where we review books, and that's with me and Andy N. And that'll be around the beginning of every month. So thanks for listening and tune in next time. Bye for now.